Hello everyone. So today we are uh, looking at a problem involving polynomials in calculus, and um, this is actually quite interesting because we're going to be using a theorem or a, like a result, you can say, maybe even an observation to be honest. But uh, we, it's it's actually a standard result. So you may have seen it before, but uh, a direct application of that result is usually not seen. But this is a rare example of that where it is uh, actually it's actually very helpful. And uh, you can actually solve it in many ways, but if you actually know this result, then it becomes, then the problem becomes very easy. Actually, let's just see how we can deal with that. So yeah, this is the problem number five from the CMI Chennai Mathematical Institute entrance exam in 2016. And um, in this video, we're going to be looking at an interesting result involving polynomials in calculus. Then obviously, a proof of the result. And after that, we have some book suggestions for ISI and CMI. And at the end, of course, a similar but challenging problem. This video is sponsored by Chinta.com. Since 2010, Chinta has trained thousands of students from all around the world in mathematical olympiads, physics olympiads, computer science and informatics olympiads, ISI CMI entrances, and research projects for school and college students. So this is what they're telling us. They need to find we need to find a polynomial a polynomial so one of them px that satisfies the following conditions when p of x is divided by x is per 100 the remainder is 1 and the second is that when p of x is divided by x minus 2 whole cube the remainder is 2 so whenever you see this thing of a remainder what comes to mind obviously remainder theorem is probably something that comes to mind really quickly right you see a polynomial you see um, certain P of X, certain things like X is per 100, X minus 2 whole, maybe remainder theorem is going to be used. And yes, it will be used, but not in the first step. Um, so yeah, let's, let's see what we can do with that. Now I'm going to write a lemma. So my lemma is that uh, if F of X leaves a constant remainder, C, or you can just call it anything, it leaves a constant remainder, um, let's say m when divided by x minus c raised to the power k, then that implies that f prime c is divisible by x minus c raised to the power k minus 1. And actually, an interesting thing is that the converse is also true. Okay, so the converse is also true. and so this is the kind of like the result of the theorem that I was talking to you about and uh, let me just prove this in brief. So the proof is actually quite trivial. So they're telling us that f of x leaves a constant remainder m when divided by x minus c raised to the power k. So essentially using the division algorithm I can write uh, the dividend as the divisor times the quotient plus the remainder. Right? You must have seen this before. And if I just try to calculate f prime x, what would be f prime x? Right, f prime x would be nothing but d by dx of q of x times x minus c raised per k. And if you're aware of the product rule when it comes to derivatives, you would be able to compute this. This would be q of x times x minus c raised per k minus 1 plus x minus c raised per k times q prime x. Right? And how can we kind of simplify this a little bit? So I can just... Uh, manipulate this in this manner this i can write as x minus c raised to the power k minus 1 times q prime x times x minus c right and splitting this up into um, k minus 1 and 1 so f prime x essentially then becomes x minus c raised to the power k minus 1 if i take that common i will be left with q of x plus q prime x times x minus c so we can actually see that x minus c raised to the power k minus 1 divides f prime of x. And uh, this theorem is hence proven. That's what we wanted to prove. Now the converse is also true because of the fact that, you know, in a way integration and differentiation are inverses of each other. So if you actually integrate f prime of x, you would get um, x minus c raised to the power k plus some constant m that we were referring to earlier. So you can actually prove that the converse is also true. Now let's come back to the problem. What was the problem telling us? So now that we have this lemma, the problem was telling us that when px is divided by x is per 100, the remainder is 1. 
so this is a constant remainder okay excellent when p of x is divided by x minus 2 whole cube the remainder is 2 again a constant remainder so maybe it's a good it's it might it might be a good thing to actually apply this lemma so it is actually saying that px is something like qx times x is per 100 plus 1 and at the same time px is let's say something else r of x times x minus 2 whole q plus 2 right that's essentially what it was saying the remainder is 2 now now it we, we essentially now can say that uh, p of x is divisible by x is to the power 99 p prime x right from this theorem that we just stated and similarly x minus 2 whole square should also divide p prime of x so now what can we conclude from here now i can essentially conclude that p prime of x will be nothing but a times x is for 99 times x minus 2 whole square right and that's actually great because now it's actually solvable so i can write p prime x as a times x is for 99 x square minus 4x plus 4 and let me just proceed with a little bit of simplification p prime x is a x is per 101 minus 4x is per 100 plus 4x is per 99. After this point, we do nothing but integrate both sides. So if I just integrate both sides, I'll get p of x is equal to a times x is per 102 by 102 minus 4x is per 101 by 101 plus 4x is per 100 by 100. And uh, if you're having any doubts what I'm doing over here, it's nothing but the integration of x is per n x is for n dx which is nothing but x is for n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 that's essentially what i'm using over here and obviously never to forget the constant of integration it's an indefinite integration we can never afford to forget that so now we have an uh, we have an expression for p of x so p of x is nothing but a times x is for 1 or 2 by 1 or 2 minus 4x is for 101 by 101 plus 4x is for 100 by 100 plus b right that's essentially what we had found over here now it is given to us that uh, p of 0 is 1 why because we are dividing it by x is for 99 and using the remainder theorem we essentially put x equal to 0 right this is essentially a little bit of the remainder theorem which you might have uh, maybe looked at earlier right you divide by x is for 99 the remainder is 1 and you divide it by x minus 2 whole cube so you put p of 2 and you get the remainder as 2 so now you have the value of p of 0 and p of 2 and that should be enough to find a and b let me just do that for you if i put p x equals to 0 i'll get p of 0 which is 1 which is a times everything becomes 0 over here plus b so therefore b is equal to 1 and after that, if I put x equals to 2, I get p of 2, which is 2, which is a times 2 raised to the power 102 divided by 102 minus 4 times 2 raised to the power 101 divided by 101 plus 4 times 2 raised to the power 100 divided by 100 plus 1. So we can essentially find out the value of a very easily. So a times this entire quantity, 2 raised to the power 102 by 102 minus 2 raised to the power 103 by 101 minus 2 raised to the power 102 by 100 is nothing but 1 and then you can really find out the value of a you can simplify it if you want but uh, really even if you leave it in this format it should be perfectly fine so a and b are constants that we actually determine b is 1 and a is this uh, rough looking expression but yeah so that that was essentially the value of p of x right once you found a and b you just plug it back into the equation of p of x that we found over here and that's it that's how you would solve this problem so it's actually pretty simple if you knew this lemma which we just proved as well if you actually knew this the lemma and it's converse you can actually prove that uh, this, this problem then becomes very trivial however if you do not know this lemma if you let's say went to the exam without knowing it is there another way to solve it yes there is using maybe it's, it's a little bit more rigorous using maybe some ideas of number theory maybe you can apply chinese remainder theorem etc but uh, i would definitely advise you to have a look at this theorem and actually very it's actually very standard result however we might not see it regularly across uh, a plethora of olympiads 
But I really hope you enjoyed that explanation. So moving on, we have certain book suggestions for calculus. And as I see my entrance exam, pre-calculus by Tarasov, single variable calculus by I.M. Aron, playing with graphs by Aryan Publication, challenges and thrills of pre-college mathematics, mathematical circles, excursion mathematics, and a test of mathematics at the 10 plus 2 level. So after that, we have a similar but challenging problem. And it's asking us that let Px be a real polynomial, satisfying three given conditions, P of 1, P of 2, and P of 3. And we need to determine the remainder when P of x is divided by x minus 1 times x minus 2 times x minus 3. But the really obvious hint over here is that they've given us P1, P2, P3, and they've asked the remainder when x minus 1, x minus 2, and x minus 3 divides P of x. What's the remainder? I think you might have seen such problems before, especially if you're preparing for like IOQM. This is one of the rather standard problems and the IOQM is coming up as well. So if you're able to make any progress on it or if you're able to solve it, let me know in the comment section below and I'll help you out. Until then, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much and bye-bye. The programs are designed for students who are passionate about mathematics. And they are personalized with one-on-one -on -one training, individual evaluation and remedial sessions. The reason Chinta students are successful over the last 10 years because they are taught by mathematicians and real Olympiads from leading universities in India, United States and Europe. Some of our students come back to teach at Chinta from Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, MIT, UCLA, ISI, CMI, IITs, TIFR and IISC. For more information, visit chitta.com.